All right, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, cast a smite here. Oh, oh boy. Okay. And... The warp has overtaken me! Nice. So our first step is going to be getting a path for the wires to go. Most of this body is hollow, so that makes our job pretty easy. But I will have to drill a hole through his foot here on the right side that's just going to go up through his ankle into the knee. And then from there, it's pretty much hollow. And then, of course, we're going to have to drill out the head. So I've marked it with the awl, and I'm going to start with a reasonably small drill, drill a nice pilot hole. I'm going to go through, I'm going to step up with bigger size drills once I get the depth kind of where I want it. That's what I'm checking right now. And then I'm going to go full blown to this big fat drill. Um, my pin vise isn't big enough, so I've put it in an actual drill. And I put the torque setting all the way down on this so I don't risk ripping it apart. Now we go over to the microscope. So these eyes need to come out. The light is not going to shine through them very well. So I've marked them here with the awl. And now I'm taking a drill in the pin vise here. Now this drill is about 0.5 millimeters thick. It is not a big drill by any means. So I go real slow and be real careful that I don't snap this drill bit. And now that we have holes for both of the eyes, we're going to make them more, well, eye-shaped. I'm going to come with the X-Acto knife here, and I'm just going to widen these out to kind of make them the shape that I want them to be. I'm going to go real slow, real careful. And once I actually have the shape kind of cut out, and uh, I've kind of trimmed the inside of it, I'm just gonna put a blue LED in here to just give it a test to make sure that it looks the way I want it to. And once that's done, I'm actually gonna come in with some Tamiya super thin plastic glue and just paint it over the top. This is gonna kind of smooth out any of the rough edges that are left from all of the scraping and filing and drilling I've done. So I'm gonna go ahead and solder up a 2835 white LED. If you need to know more information on LEDs and soldering, I have videos on both of those you can check out here. And now the LED is all ready to go. So we need to glue this into the head. Now I'm gonna use epoxy resin. This is a two ton, so it'll give me a little extra working time. I'm gonna get out just a penny sleeve to mix it on, toothpick to mix it with. This is some pigment that I'm gonna use. This is resin pigment. Do not use paint to pigment your resin. It'll end poorly. Water and resin do not mix well. And this is actually the reason that I went with a white LED. The white LED coming through the blue will look more blue the duller it is. So when you actually press the button, it'll bleed out more and look more white. So you actually get a more color variation, and I really like that. I also want to point out that this is actually opaque pigment. You can get translucent pigment, but I'm using opaque because it's going to diffuse the light more and give a more even spread across the LED. So now I'm just gonna put some of this in the hole where the LED is gonna go. Some of this is absolutely gonna ooze out where the eyes are. We're gonna deal with that a little bit later. You don't wanna have a lot ooze out from the eyes, but it's kind of unavoidable. So use best judgment here and try to make sure that you're not creating too much work for yourself later. But also you do want the eyes to have some of that resin there so it will diffuse the light and make it look good. And that'll bring us back to the microscope. Here you can see that the resin absolutely did overflow out of the eyes, totally expected. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna come in with an X-Acto knife and chip away at this stuff. It actually doesn't adhere very well to the plastic, especially because we smoothed it with the Tamiya extra thin plastic glue. So I'm just gonna kinda cut around the eyes, leave the eyes intact, and make sure that I have a relief for the resin that I want to stay there so I can chip away to that relief cut. And once I've chipped away all that resin, I'm actually gonna come back in with the Tamiya Super Thin, and we're just gonna go ahead and smooth out any of that plastic that got chipped up in the process of this. But as you see, the eyes are looking pretty good. And that'll bring us to the base. So I'm just gonna go ahead and solder a little tiny switch on here, just using some solder paste. So this switch is soldered one side to the pad, and I'll solder the other side to the actual wire. And that brings us to the V block or the bench block. I'm gonna use a piercing saw or jeweler saw, depending on where you're from. Uh, so I need a hole to put the saw blade in through, and we're gonna cut around here. 
the 2032 battery pack that I have is a little tall for this base. So I'm actually going to cut a hole in the base to put the battery pack into and then build up around it. This is the same kind of technique that I used with the hell blasters that I did. And once I get all the way around, just pop the center out. Resistors. This is a 470 ohm and a 68 ohm resistor. So here's the parallel resistor equation. If you have two resistors in parallel, you're going to reduce your resistance value. And this is how you calculate how. So if you have two resistors of the same value connected in parallel, then you will half the resistance value. I know what you're thinking. How am I going to do this math? Well, this little button might help. So after I get that sum, I'm going to hit that button one more time. And that's going to give me 59.4. 50 is the minimum resistance that I've calculated that I want for this LED. So that'll work perfect. So with these tactile switches, the legs in line with each other actually have a hard connection. The legs across from that line will be connected when the button is pressed. So I've hooked up the 470 ohm resistor in line, so that will always be connected when this is on. And then I've hooked up the 68 ohm resistor on the other leg. So when I press the button, we will get 59.4 ohms across it because of the parallel resistors. So I have the positive lead soldered to the on-off switch, and the tactile switch is soldered to the negative side of this. So we're going to put an LED on here, make sure everything works before we go any further. And it looks like that's working just fine. So now it's time to get this into the base. So I've got some plastic card here. I've built up with little pieces of plastic card around the edge, and I'm just going to put a nice thin piece of plastic card over top here. And then I'm going to put some epoxy resin just in the center of the battery holder to glue that in place. You could use super glue here, but the issue with super glue is it might fog and the fogging of the super glue will block your electronic connections. And I'd really prefer that the button and switch continue working. So once I've got all the epoxy on there, I'm gonna clamp these together with just some spring clamps here. Let that dry completely and then keep working on building this base up. So now it's time to put this guy together. I've already painted the head because I'm doing a camo pattern and I wanted to get that out of the way before I glued him into that psychic hood. So I'm gonna run these wires down, put a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin here to glue that on. I'm gonna to have to avoid painting the rest of these little camo bits, which is gonna be fun later. But once I have the head on, I'm gonna run this down, put the second half of the body on, and then run it out that leg. I'm gonna leave the arms and shoulders off so I can finish the camo pattern easier. Now that the body's all together, I'm going to run the wires out through the base and glue him on top of it. I'm actually, after this, going to solder these wires on. If you need more information on soldering, I have a whole video on that that you can watch that I'll link right here. That brings us to painting. I'm just putting some finishing touches on here and there. As you can see, the camo pattern's all laid down and he's fully assembled at this point. I didn't do anything special for the eyes, and here's why. I'm actually going to come in and remove all of the paint that I painted over the eyes. Painting around the eyes, especially when it comes to airbrushing and priming, just seemed like the harder way to do this. So I'm actually going to come in and scrape away all of the paint that's on the eyes that I don't want to be there. And once I get the shape of the eyes kind of cut in and scraped away, I'm actually going to come in with a brush and brush away all of the little chips to see my work, see what I've done at this point. And then once that's done, I'm just gonna dim the lights a bit here and turn it on so I can actually see the lights coming through. And now I can see if the light's actually shining through the way I want it to and do any touch-ups. Like, I don't know, maybe a little bit of painting. I would suggest if you use magnification of this strength to give yourself a lot of leeway when it comes to your mistakes in painting. So I just have to do this twice more. And here it is done. All three of my librarians have LEDs in their head. The ones with the helmets had one extra hole for the little light at the top. The same LEDs were used for all of these, so this is just running on one fat LED that's going to light up the whole head. Hopefully you've learned something, and hopefully this inspires you to do your own LEDs and your own miniatures. I have a separate video on LEDs just as basics and soldering, so like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.